This just in. Just two hours ago, for the first time, astronomers announced they've witnessed a new solar system at the moment its planets are just starting to come into being. So they're seeing hot minerals just starting to solidify out of a cloud of gas and dust around a baby star. And we're here today with astronomer Melissa McClure at Leiden University in the Netherlands. Melissa, hello. Hi, Deborah. It's really glad to be here. I'm, we're so glad you're here. Thank you so much for coming. So what you're seeing here has never been seen before, correct? That's correct. So we're, we're seeing the so-called uh, T equals zero or time zero moment in the, the formation of an, another uh, planetary system that's very similar to our own sun, but it's, it's uh, located much further away um, in the constellation of Orion. Okay, and this is a big, big deal. In fact, you made the cover of Nature today. Yeah, we're super stoked about this. Um, so this, this, uh, the, the, the title "Forged in Fire" is sort of referring to how the materials that we see actually originated when solid, uh, tiny dust particles burned up really close to the protostar, um, in, in, in the, the sort of fiery part, really close to it, and then. Um, these, these hot minerals condensed out of this hot gas. And what you see here is actually sort of an artist's impression of what they think this, this protostar looked like based on some of the data that we'll, we'll see later in, in the conversation. Um, but you can see there's like a sort of uh, a fiery jet that's coming straight out from the, the star, which is located at the center. Um, and this is near the region where we would actually see these minerals forming. Wow, that's so cool. And so you're using the term uh, protostar, and I know astronomers talk about protostars and protoplanets. Tell us what that means. So a, a protostar is a, uh, a a very hot ball of gas that has, has started to um, uh, uh, condense and, and it, it's, it's contracting and it will eventually start to burn hydrogen and, and form something that becomes a star. But it, at this point, it's still... Um, basically eating a lot of the, the gas and dust that surround it very, very rapidly to build up its mass to eventually become a star. Oh, that's so cool. And so we've all seen images like this one. This is an artist's concept of a disk around a star that uh, and planets are thought to form in these disks. So uh, this is an artist's concept, but this is a real image of a real star. Mm -hmm. This this image was taken with the ALMA telescope, and this is HR HL Tari, uh, and and astronomers believe there might be as many as seven to nine planets forming in this disk, and they're basing that on the gaps between those rings and and how many they can see there. But you found something different and amazing. Tell us about what you found. Absolutely. So, so um, in 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 the the systems like like the picture you showed with with HL Tau, those planets have to be like a certain size in order to make those gaps, right? Um, and and you know people have even seen like mature planets around uh, older protoplanetary disks at like five million years. HL Tau is about five hundred thousand years. And now we're looking in this picture at HOPS three one five. It's it's a we, we give terrible names to these these systems. Um, and it's actually a young protostar that's that's only 100,000 years. So it's five times younger than HL Tau. And in this system, we don't think that there are uh, you know big planets that have formed already. We think that what what we're we're actually seeing is um, these first initial seed particles that go on to to become planets. And there's some suggestive evidence that we may see the sort of second step in this process, uh, which is the formation of, of something called a planetesimal, which is like an asteroid sized body um, that will then collide to go on to, to, to form planets like you might expect in HL Tau later on. Um, okay. But at, at, so at this the, so... early... Oh, you go ahead. Going. Oh, I was just saying that at, at this early age, what 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 you're looking at um, in in orange is this sort of carbon monoxide gas that we we think is sort of everywhere in these systems, but the the areas that are the brightest orange sort of trace edges in in what we call an outflow of material that's moving away from from the star, 
Um, so you also see at the very center, there's this little dark spot um, where you have like the, the blue and the orange are both coming out of this little dark spot along the diagonal. And that little dark spot is actually this protoplanetary disk. Um, it's so bright around the, the backside of it. We're, we're just sort of seeing this, this uh, absence of the carbon monoxide emission um, there. But that, that's where we think all the action is happening um, in, in terms of the mineral formation. No, wait, the little dark spot in there where the blue and the orange come together, that's the disk? Yes. Yeah. Wow. So this this image that we're looking at here takes up a lot more space than, say, this image that we looked at before. Absolutely. So this the, this image for, for HL Tau, that would sort of fit, um, a, it would be a bit larger than that little black spot in, in that uh, protostar. This is because our protostar HOPS315 is younger, so the disk is smaller, but it's the same the same physical structure. Wow. Okay. And so what you're seeing, and it's been quite a long time. I mean, I've been in a, writing about astronomy for 50 years. And uh, it's, you know, even back in the 1970s, when I first started, people were uh, just starting to feel sure about the idea that uh, planets formed in disks around stars, and that what happened was that stuff started condensing out of this cloud of gas and dust, and that particles started to solidify out, and then they began to stick together in these planetesimals that you mentioned. Uh, and so what part of that are you seeing? So we're, we're seeing the part where um, we have this, this gas-rich rich, uh, uh, material in, in the disk, and this is silicon monoxide. So, so that's what you see here where these, these two uh, atoms are stuck together, and that they condense minerals out from that silicon monoxide. And those minerals stick together, and they grow into these sort of pebbles that are about the size of your thumbnail, sort of like uh, one centimeter, roughly. I know that's like metric and here in the US, I should say inches, but um, but those, those pebbles are what eventually, um, in a very short amount of time after they form, large clouds of these pebbles will actually uh, collapse under their own gravity to form these sort of asteroid-sized planetesimals in the disk. And we, we, we infer this from the solar system where, where we actually see some of these um, uh, minerals in, in meteorites from our solar system. And they can be very, very accurately age dated. And they actually define the age of these, these minerals defines this T equals zero moment for our own solar system at 4.6 billion years ago. So what, what we're seeing is the manufacture, the, the formation of those minerals um, in, in this other system. Okay, and so so our own planet Earth must have gone through this process too. And let me just jump back to this image for a second. So there was a point where our own Earth existed as these particles in space. Exactly, like a, a large number like spread over a very lar large area and then they all came together um, and ended up uh, forming you know, multiple planetesimals and those planetesimals collided and, and maybe uh, accreted or, Sorry, I'm using jargon again. Um, it, it, ate, it ate up some more of these these pebbles, and then eventually formed Earth and the other terrestrial and, planets at the same time. And so, and so, how did you see this? Like, what you saw, uh, from what I understand, is uh, the signature of this mineral in both a gaseous form and a solid form, which makes you know that it's at a stage where the gases are turning into solids. Is that right? Yeah, so so we saw a sort of a, a, a fingerprint that allowed us to identify like this specific um, molecule in the gas phase and then this specific solid state that that uh, mineral that includes that molecule in it um, in, in the solid state phase. So we did that with the James Webb Space Telescope um, because it observes in the infrared, which is where a lot of these these fingerprints of these different uh, uh, gases and solids are. Um, so we, 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 could, we could say we're, we're really um, probably detecting this T equals mom one moment from the JWST observations, but JWST doesn't map, uh, map the spatial location of where the molecules are coming from with, with these spectra um, at, 
a, a good enough resolution for us to say where it was coming from. So we went then to Alma and got these um, very high spatial resolution or, or um, like um, uh, uh, images. You, you can sort of imagine like JWST is a very pixelated old camera and, and Alma could be like a, a really high resolution image. Um, and with that, we were able to actually pinpoint where in the disk these, these, uh, this silicon monoxide gas was coming from. And it was coming from within the same region that our asteroid belt and terrestrial planets are seen in the solar system. So we're really probing this innermost region where rocky planets would form. That is so cool. And so uh, congratulations on, on this this work, this is really wonderful. It's it's so exciting. Um, and I wanna say one more thing about this uh, system and that is it's located in a place in the sky that our viewers might recognize and that's in the direction of the constellation Orion. But how far away is it, Melissa? So it, it's located about 1300 light years away. So the light that we're seeing now would have emerged like in like 700 AD, something like that. Wow. And so where, uh, where if it was 1300 years ago, do you have an estimate of where it would be in that process in real time? Like if you could go to the star and see it, like how long does that process take is what I'm asking. Uh, yeah, so, so it, the, the process of, of forming the first planetesimals takes about 100,000 to 200,000 more years uh, beyond the, the age of this current system. So it's, it's much longer than the time scale that, that, the, um, that we, we have to worry about in terms of how far away it is from us. Um, so it, it, it would, I, I think this is part of why it, op it offers a really good opportunity to actually make comparisons with our solar system because um, you know, we, we can't necessarily see the process happen um, like over our lifetimes, but we can get very, very detailed observations of, of where in, in this protoplanetary disk these materials are starting to form and compare the age of this system with other systems to figure out in, in that way using these sort of snapshots um, how, uh, how disks like what was around our sun evolved with time and how planets formed within those disks. Well, that's really wonderful. Congratulations. Thank you and so for much. all the folks out there who are interested, we'll put the link. We haven't done it yet, but we will, after this broadcast, put the link to the nature study into our host description so that you can go to the study and read it if you want to. Melissa, thank you. Thank you, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Much appreciated. Uh, we're Earth Sky. And we are here live every weekday around midday in North America. And tomorrow we'll be talking about the fact that the entire earth is having its shortest days around now. And of course that has to do with how fast earth spins. It's a cool story. And we hope you'll join us then.